Hello guys, and welcome to episode 5 of the Whips Nation podcast. I'm your host Alex, and our guest today is Whip Snakes defenseman and two-time PLL champion, Matt Dunn. Matt talks about the impact of having fans in the stands this season, what a PLL video game would look like, and much more. It's going to be a good one, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. In three, two, one. Okay, we're live. What's going on, Matt? How are you? I'm good, man. How about yourself? Thanks for having me on. Of course. So we have Matt Dunn here two-time PLL champion with the Whip Snakes. Um, what you got going on this morning? This morning, um, so far, I uh, got a workout in, so I've been going to a field twice a week, trying to get like footwork and conditioning ramping back up because now we're you know a month away from camp. Um, other than that, I'm coaching uh, at a high school around here, and we got a game tomorrow, so I have to watch some, watch some film for that to get ready, and otherwise just trying to plan like the summer is going to be crazy between playing and traveling around for training events and all that. So just planning and getting all that organized. That's awesome. How's your season going? Good. Well, it's going well. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy. It's been a weird one because, you know, every team we're playing conference games and yeah. we had to take a 10 day break because we had a COVID exposure and other teams have had to do that too. So sometimes yeah. the scheduling gets a little chaotic, but compared to last year being cut short, like we yeah. played six games, um, which is awesome. Um, And I think, you know, we're starting to catch our stride. It's been a weird year in the fact that we had limited preseason prep time. So we're trying different guys out, but I'm excited with where we're at right now. I love the guys. They're awesome. Um, And we got a couple more big ones and then playoffs. So trying to get hot at the right time. And that's that's what it's all about. I mean, this COVID season has got all of us coaches just trying to adapt and try to figure out, you know, how to work with our athletes. Um, how to deal with, you know, COVID exposures and deal with limited personnel. Um, has it made you, you know, grow as a coach? What have you learned this season? Yeah, you know, and this is honestly, this would be my second year, you know, being an official, like, on staff high school coach. Um, and last year was basically cut short with COVID. So for the amount of time I spent around the game and working individual training and all that, this is the first full season I've, I've kind of coached at a, a varsity, you know, level. Um, and yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of taught me, like I'm used to, I had the mindset of like teaching things from a college perspective, because that's how I remember being taught. And then I'm starting to realize the amount of time, like the season is so short and the amount you can actually like, it's not about teaching everybody the exact right thing. It's about getting them what they can digest in a reasonable amount of time and communicate in an effective manner. So in a condensed season with limited, you know, preseason prep and shorter season, I'm finding I'm challenged to now find ways to simplify things and Mm -hmm. hey, what's the, you know, the 20% that's going to get us 80% of the results type of deal. So I think it's a helpful skill, but it's definitely challenging. Do you, uh, did you use Zoom at all for like, you know, film or anything like that? Yeah, we did a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, We had a, a 10 day, you know, break for a COVID exposure and during that time, it was right before our first game. So basically we would we missed our two preseason scrimmages and 10 practices and then three days later had our first game. And so we tried to, we did film and and some game plan, but we sh- slowly realized that these are high school kids that yeah. some of them are spending all day in virtual class. Yeah. And so to ask them to hop on Zoom after it, so we did a couple and we were just like, I don't know how much we're really getting out of this. So yeah. um, we kind of, we tried to keep it short and cut some back because you're realizing like the bang for a buck was pretty low at that point. That's that's pretty funny because I know a lot of coaches are coming out with totally weird and really brilliant actually ways of kind of getting around certain things. I know the coach at Calvert Hall has been bringing out like a huge whiteboard onto the field, onto the lacrosse field and doing X's and O's there on the field, which is pretty cool. Um, so it's just cool to hear how people are kind of adapting to that. Um, now kind of speaking still on the topic of like COVID, but kind of bringing it more towards uh, the PLL, we didn't have fans in the stands last year um, for the second championship. Kind of go into that a little bit and, uh, you know, give me your opinions on it. Are you excited to have fans back? What was the difference between, you know, the first championship, which I was at and was an absolute electric atmosphere compared to, you know, the second one? Yeah, I, I mean, 
it, it's different for yeah. sure. And uh, that was a challenge to adapt to that. Um, now was a challenge everybody had to face. So yeah. it all is kind of a level one, but it, it was weird. You know, the first championship was, it was awesome. That was one of the greatest games I've played yeah. in just from an environment standpoint. Um, and to have a game go into overtime like that and win and the crowd was electric, that was awesome. Yeah. And then it's, it's a little funny going to the, the next year where you're playing a two and a half week tournament, you're playing in the championship and it's just, you know, they, they did, they put some crowd noise in, which was nice, but oh, the environment okay. just wasn't the same. And, and to be in a championship game where it's kind of just like nobody's around and, uh, and to feel like it's at such a high level, but the environment not match that was interesting. So it definitely took some, you know, internal motivation from each other yeah. to to continue to like snap guys into it because yeah. you're, you can default too easily like the environment doesn't set you into the actual um value of that game so i'm looking for i can't wait to get fans back in yeah. but it was interesting and given the circumstances it was as good as it could have been for us given that you know we couldn't have them awesome yeah, I was I was uh, with my wife just making summer plans right now, like looking about, you know, what weekends are we going to go to? And right now I'm thinking uh, Colorado Springs, San Jose for the All-Star game. And then hopefully I'll be in D.C. for the championship again, but we'll see. <laughs> That'd be sick. Yeah. yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll be there, too. <laughs> yeah, that's and that's and that's exactly yeah. what, it, what I was meaning. Yeah. But um, oh, yeah, that's awesome. So. You know, going for like a three-peat, that's a lot of pressure. It's, you know, going back to back, it's one of the hardest things to do in sports for a lot of different reasons. And not many teams three-peat and there's reasons for that. Um, what sort of pressure, you know, do you anticipate going into the season? And do you, you know, plan on just taking things game by game, you know, playing whip snakes ball the whole time? I mean, what are you kind of going into the season? Uh, what's your mindset looking like? Yeah, um, I think exactly that. And you're right, yep. it is challenging and it's yep. not like, we're not robots that can just flip a switch and be yeah. like, we're not <laughs> gonna think about it. Yeah. But Coach Stagnita does a really nice job of yeah. constantly reiterating, you know, the hardest thing about winning a second championship or third championship is because you start to focus on winning a championship and not yep. the steps to get there. And we have, a, we have there's a lot of steps from preseason training to training camp to every single game and how we manage things in between um and quite frankly every game is going to be extremely difficult yeah. and also honestly the last two championships we won we we won an overtime the first year and we had a big comeback the second year and we won an overtime the semifinal game the second year yeah um, so none of these were easy even though like it's kind of easy to like say like to be like oh you're, you won two you, you got we had a good draft like you guys didn't lose a ton of guys like that yeah. like it's easier for people to say that but i think for us for, fortunately we have good leadership and a mature team to know how difficult it is and understand the importance of focusing on the process and not overlooking things so yeah our focus is going to be one step at a time let's focus on that game and and trusting that if we do those things right um we should put ourselves in a position to compete for you know a third one um which is the ultimate goal but yeah. definitely not getting doing our best to stay focused on what's in front of us that's right and and that's and that's the mindset that i had as a player is just always you know one day at a time who do we got this week okay what do i need to do today to prepare for that game this week and then just kind of just keep going uh throughout the whole season um so number 33 so I, uh, I was 33 was my very first lacrosse number in seventh grade. It was my number in college. So what does that number mean to you? And were you always that number? What do you think the significance of like a number in sports means to you? Yeah, that's been an interesting one for me. I, I don't, it doesn't get brought up much really. Um, yeah. And, but I have been number 33 since my sophomore year of high school. Wow. Um, and so I made varsity my sophomore year and we got to pick jerseys and I guess, and what I found over the years <laughs> is it's not a very popular number. <laughs> and so, which has been, which has been, I guess, a good thing for me yeah, because yeah. every team I've gone to, I've never had to fight for it. And so I had my, my sophomore year, we picked jerseys and I was one of like four sophomores on the team. And yeah. so we had the last pick and there was like six jerseys, 11, 33 was there. And I grabbed it and it was actually because 
Um, when I was younger, I guess I was in eighth or ninth grade, there was a defender on the varsity team that was number 33. Oh. And I really liked this game. He ended up going to, to UPenn. Okay. Um, and as like an eighth grade defender watching the team, I was like, you know, I, I like the way that guy plays and that's who I'd watch play. Um, and then um, fortunately the numbers are not that popular when he graduated, nobody else took it. So I grabbed it <laughs> and then I had it all three years in high school. I got to Maryland freshman year. They said like, hey, you guys can ask, you guys can request a number like your freshman. Wow. Like, you may not get it, but like if you want one, just write it in. If it's available, we'll give it to you. 33 was there, got drafted, you know, to the, the Rattlers after college. 33 was available. Number to the Whip Snakes, 33 was available. <laughs> uh, Georgia Swarm Indoor, 33 was available. So at pretty much aside from I, I haven't played on a like a legitimate team that I haven't been number thirty three on. I played. Were you uh, thirty three for uh, Team USA? That might have been. No, that was the only one I wasn't for indoor. I I, thought, I was gonna say there's been exhibition events and little mm -hmm. things, and then the indoor world games. I wasn't thirty three for, um, but. I, I think I was, I can't even remember. I think I was 10, I was, yeah. but um, I was, yeah, everything else, I was 33. So it's kind of worked out. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so funny how significant numbers are to people. And, you know, sometimes they, they carry a lot of meaning and then maybe their dad was that number. And then otherwise it's just, you know, I've always been this number, like I need to be this number type of thing. But it's uh, it's kind of funny to hear, you know, other people's opinions on that as well. Yeah, it okay. kind of happened naturally. Just you know, like if I got to Maryland and 33 wasn't available, I would have yeah. been, you know, like, I don't know, 29 or something. Like, I know, but... <laughs> but then, like, would you have carried that over? Like, would you want to, like, request a, new, a 29 in the PLL oh, for no. the swarm? Well, I mean... it's funny. They, they, they send out forms every year. The PLL sends out a form and goes, um, pick your, your three pref preferred jersey numbers. Oh. And so I put 33 and I literally have no clue what to put for two and three. And I'm like, it cause like, like, well, if you get traded, like you, somebody else might be 33 or something like that. I was like, I like 31 and 32, I guess. Like, I, I just, I don't know. <laughs> what, like, like I have no clue. That's hilarious. Um, so my number in high school was 24. Cause I was just a huge Kobe fan. I mean, that guy, yeah. like he was an incredible athlete. He motivated me like beyond any other athlete. And when that number wasn't available at college, I remember offering one of our captains who had that number is like, dude, I'll give you $50 right now to switch me jersey numbers. He didn't do it, of course, but um, it, but that kind of brings me to my next point. It's like, who was like kind of your like sports hero like growing up? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, it's, it, I mean, I liked, I could say Kobe too. Yeah. Like, um, I watched a lot of, so growing up, I was, I loved basketball um, and football more so than lacrosse. I actually didn't, I watched a little bit of lacrosse, but I, I didn't know like all the guys when I was younger. Yeah. Um, it, it was, it wasn't televised to the same extent. And just honestly, my favorite sports, like I loved playing basketball and football. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I would say like Kobe was, I would, I remember like constantly watching like NBA or play and I play like NBA live video games or something and I'd go on my driveway and just like do anything I saw Kobe try to do anything I saw him do in a game um even though it was a little before my time when he was great like Michael Jordan was uh, I mean I'm just saying the cliche guys but yeah those guys are so many for a reason because I think what they embody from um an attitude standpoint towards the game the compete level and the impact they've had on their sport and the way you know what they've done for their teams also um consistent at such a high level is so impressive the reason they are so legendary is the way they conduct their business and i remember i used to read like sport like these little sports biographies when i was younger and reading michael jordan's like the you saw in the do documentary now i always remember the season where he got like beat up by the pistons and then yeah. put on a bunch of like 15 pounds of muscle in the off season it completely changed his diet and all that i was like a 10 year old kid and i was just like <laughs> just like that just stuck in my head um like and things like that so i i think he was definitely a guy that um i kind of you know was attracted to and inspired by the way he did things at least on the court and athletically yeah my my favorite part about the the last dance jordan doc was uh when it came out that 
he had sort of like made up like a, a situation in his mind where someone was talking shit to him and yeah. they asked him later like hey did that actually happen he's like nope i made it up and it was just to fire him up even more for that next game and he dropped like 40 something points like that yeah that, that's incredible for someone to be able to do something like that um it so is it really is so you mentioned that you were playing NBA Live back in the day. Did you uh, were you a Madden guy? Did you play a lot of Madden too? I did. I played. So I don't. I haven't played recently, and I didn't even play in like college and high school much. Yeah. But up until like eighth or ninth grade or, or so, from yeah. like when I was like, I remember I got Madden two thousand and two for uh, for Nintendo sixty four, and it was like Dante Culpepper, and I yep. played with the Vikings every game, like. Randy Moss and then from that point on probably to like 08 I played every year like my big Christmas gift was like Madden NBA yeah. Live or, and like another right. game and I, I played those I played seasons like I made up players I, I did fake drafts and like picked my teams and I tell you in that time period I knew every depth chart of any NFL team wow. and like because like when you play the games like you're constantly looking at that stuff yeah, like, it's nah, true. I you are. I, I couldn't tell you much, but I did play a lot uh, I, back in the day. I can only tell you just because I play fantasy football, and that gets you pretty invested as well. It's kind of like the adult yeah. version, you know? But um, so with that, a lot of the Madden games had pretty like iconic soundtracks. And, you know, they had like that list of songs where you're going through the menus and you're hearing them. Do you ever hear, if you ever like hear one of those songs like in public, do you? think back to like a Madden game that had that song in that uh in that soundtrack yeah there's a couple I think uh I think there were, th it might have been Madden 05 that good Charlotte's the anthem was in uh 2003 and I was about was to say this, I was about to say the same thing was, because anytime good Charlotte comes on I immediately think of Madden 03 um I, okay I loved the 03 was Marshall Falk I, yep Marshall I Falk yeah. I was a front I was a front runner like oh three oh two I would play with the Vikings O three I play with the Rams all the time like I just I love like I don't know That's but awesome. yeah I do remember I think it was that and there was a there's like another one I think it was like a fallout boy like dance dance was like on like oh six or oh seven. Oh yeah I don't know why I don't know why those songs stuck in my head but like those are two of them that like I just yeah Dude, it's sure because when we were growing up, like that's like the kind of music that people listen to, I guess, you know? Yeah, and also the amount yeah. of time you play, you hear that song every day for three yeah. hours. So. <laughs> that too, yeah. Anytime you're in the menu, all that time spent, you know, yeah. looking at yeah. looking at the draft and, you know, creating yeah, your team, in the all back, that. In the background, that's just right. going. It, it's, it's crazy. That, so sports in video games is something that um, I want to see at some point for the PLL. I think that would be a way for them to reach such a larger audience because I know, especially kids, especially kids these days, dude, they grow up playing video games. If we can, you know, somehow get, you know, a quality lacrosse game that'll just bring in like a casual fan. Because like when I was growing up, dude, I played Tony Hawk Pro Skater all the time. So oh, it's yeah. an awesome, it awesome game. Dude, yeah. I can't skateboard for shit. And I love that game, but it got me some like somewhat interested in it. And, um, you know, I got a lot of those games and um, some of my friends ended up being skateboarders. But I just I think I can see a similar thing for lacrosse. Um, if they if the PLL were to partner with like, you know, Electronic Arts or one of these other game developers, what would your ideal PLL lacrosse game look like? That's a good question. Um... And, and yeah, I was thinking the same thing because I played the Tony Hawk games and I, yeah. I tried to, I got into skateboarding for a little bit. <laughs> I, I, I played the Tiger yeah. Woods games and when I was younger because those were so much fun. And I even yeah, tried, they I were. got into golf a little. Yep. Um, you know, I think like, I think it would, it would have to look like NHL a little yeah. bit. Yep. Um, I think that's probably, you know, a FIFA and NHL comparison. I think is good bigger field like fifa but you know your hand you got the small ball tight space play like yep. nhl so i i think it would be uh, you know a combo of probably those two I, I would think yeah you know um probably got you use like the joystick somehow to like do like a face dodge or like a split dodge or something and yeah 
pass it forward with a or throw back when you pull the right stick or something i don't know but yeah i think i think an inner like a game um, a game like that because it's a high speed game with a lot of options but on a bigger field and i think it'd be a pretty cool game and people love nhl and fifa like those are two very popular games so okay so in the theoretical pll video game what's the whip snakes overall rating out of 100 would be like 94 95 95 so it's still room I for mean, growth but i mean still gotta I mean, be I'm the trying best to think i'm trying to think like I, I and i'm just saying like objectively like coming yeah. off you know i would say that like if, if you're asking me realistically after these drafts and stuff looking at the league like every team is so every team could be like 90 I know. something i know it's crazy um but yeah i, th I think we're like you know low to mid 90s talented yeah. a lot of talent there veterans um definitely room for growth and improvement but I, I think you have to give us at least you know low 90s definitely um and with with games like fifa and i'm not a huge fifa guy but i have friends that are and with with fifa you can like pull players from like a lot of different leagues and teams but if you have more of the same players for, like from you know a league you get like chemistry bonuses and other things like that um with the whip snakes having like how many guys do you have for 13 guys from maryland or something like that it's it's diminishing over time as we yeah. get like new draft pick but yep. you know realistically it's probably eight to ten of like yeah. maybe ten of like you know the fifth like the 15 that were protected and left over from mm -hmm. last year and then yeah so we probably have over 50 percent how much does that play a role in your guys's chemistry on the field a lot yeah um yeah i i think and you know fortunately like the guys we've had come in not from maryland um have studs. Been <laughs> studs and, yeah. and not even studs just studs, but like great teammates and yeah. and adaptable and, and you know are smart lacrosse players um and, and none of them have made it about themselves which is a big kind of thing for our team this isn't because it just doesn't work if you yeah. do um but the chemistry piece is massive like i mean for us defensively like us all having similar understand the game having played together before trusting each other enough to like you know know like to, to follow through with the game plan we said and understand what each other are talking about and under kind of just having a feel for what the other guy's going to do like it, it's really hard to just piece that together randomly um i would i would think so i mean i had um coach murphy on the podcast last week and he was talking to me about how he reinforces with his high school guys you know the we is greater than the me you know emphasizing team ball and just watching you guys on tv um and you know on the field you guys this chemistry shows you guys are never afraid to hit that one more pass to get a you know to get a dunk um how much how much of that is kind of bled through to your guys's like identity as a team i think a lot um uh, yeah i think so and honestly like it, it 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 has a lot and i think we have a lot of i think we have a lot of really competitive guys that really like each other and like playing with each other and understand that like we our goal is to win as a team um and then to see that embodied through like we have superstars on our team like matt rambo is a superstar like yeah. michael Earhart's a superstar joe nardella kyle like and to see matt rambo out there like not only speak about team ball but put into practice and yeah. and really like he does one of one of matt's greatest attributes that i think separates him from other really good attackman players is he can make plays when needed but he also is willing to throw the one more in half a second when it's there you know, right. not some guys get caught with the ball in their stick because they always want to make a play, like and having the ability and the wherewithal to do that um, yeah. not only makes our offense better, but it sends a message to our team that like these are guys that like he could you know have all the points, we get all the accolades, but on top of that, choose to make it about the team and not themselves. And so that that's really strong for team culture. Definitely. And then I can definitely see that, you know, you're definitely bought into that. Um, I watched a ECD video from a while ago. You hit 104 miles an hour on your shot. And I don't see you shooting <laughs> a lot in the games. What's up with that? I know you got a uh, cannon, know, dude. I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know. It's funny. It just, it had like, 
it just hasn't like i haven't needed to um yeah. and it i was thinking of talking to somebody about that because the year before <laughs> 28 or the 2018 the last year in the mll yeah the way our team played like i would shoot like once a game probably and wow. I had like I, I had my first two and I had a couple a couple goals and then I I've taken one shot in the last two years with the whip snakes and I think it's partially because the way our team operates is like we have Michael Earhart running the field and yeah, true and we have our attack is is so good that like a if it's between me and Mike running the field my I might go run the field like he's yeah. so good at it and um if i get down there it's kind of like well unless i have the easy shot like i'm gonna get the ball to matt rambo and and zed and like jay and those guys and i'll let them do their thing that's awesome i mean yeah it's 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 tough to uh to say that when you know you do have such you know prominent guys in transition like you know mike Earhart and bernhard and uh yeah and shannon chuck hitting twos I mean, yeah. if you if you throw in your 104 mile per hour shot, I mean, we're pretty dangerous from the. Uh, I think it's the new bomb squad, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, they made know. a big That's deal Ch about Ch that season one. Chani, <laughs> Ch yeah, Chani and Earhart did. They, I mean, they were letting them fly, and those guys can shoot the ball, and they're great players too. So yeah, exactly. Well, I'll let those guys do their thing. If the opportunity presents itself, then maybe I'll let it fly. What What do you do ahead of your games to sort of you know, get ready? Like, do you listen to a lot of pump up music? Do you try to calm yourself down? Um, what do you, what do you, what's your pregame meal? Like, what's that look like in your preparation? Yeah. Um, I don't, I, I, I don't really do a lot of like headphones, pump up music. I'm kind of like, I like to be more open in the locker room. Um, so like whatever music's going on, I like to, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm, I am like, I do get a little like quiet and thoughtful and I, yeah. I try to like, I'll watch a ton of, a ton of film leading up to it. And, um, maybe like the day of the game I'll, or even in the locker room, I just, I like to, the fortunate thing about at our level is like all the guys we cover have highlight videos out. So I go, yeah. and I, I always watch even the guys I've covered like a bunch of times, I just watch their, how they score goals and the talk game, like talk game plan and reminders with other D guys. And, other than that, just get loose and, and try to get the right mindset to think about like what our game plan is, how we're going to execute it, what might happen out there and kind of more just visualizing that, that aspect. So what, what is scouting um, other PLL teams look like with everyone being like so ridiculously talented with especially this year coming up? How do you foresee that going with, you know, the entry of all these MLL talents? Um, you know that the stack senior class for this past college draft. I mean, how does how do how do you guys see uh, foresee you guys scouting other teams this season? Yeah, yeah, no, it's a really good question, and it's definitely different at this level based yeah. on the talent on the field and just the style of pro lacrosse. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really like you know you figure out what makes an offense tick, um, and like what what happens like when this like how do they score their goals like is it do they initiate with the midfield do they initiate with the attack more do they pick from the wing like okay they do that like if they if we can make them score goals in ways they don't want to then we'll have that's our game plan um so like we don't want to let team we figure out what teams like to do and who their guys are that do it well and we try to make other guys do it um and then beat us in uncomfortable ways so it's not like you know it's not like it's picture perfect thing but it's just like hey when you know when tom schreiber is the ball dodging out his alley well he's looking for will manny popping off the backside there let's not get beat on that one yeah. um like if he's gonna you know throw one more through x and we're gonna get dodged there that's okay like they don't they don't do that you know things like that um yeah so you figure out like every, and every team has the guy and, and you got to realize with all this talent there's still only one ball and offense is get comfortable doing certain things and so asking an offense to initiate with a guy they don't want to or mm -hmm. throw it to an awful guy they don't like throwing it to like now you're kind of if they can do it then they're a good offense and deserve to score goals but just that kind of mindset i guess gotcha so with your guys's season being you know you're traveling from city to city um how many practices are you guys able to get in before games usually one usually friday okay. night yeah, usually Friday night, but we'll link up 
occasionally we'll like I think in May we'll start getting some like preseason zooms like once a week and like getting the defense together talking through some you know what we're what we're trying to focus on this year and and things like that and um and I think in season we might have I can't remember because the bubble was different last I don't think we did a lot of zooms in between but but coach Murph would send out like you know a scouting report and some film clips and we would you know go through them and and the good thing about our team is we have a lot of guys that you know are either coaches or just are really into the game so like our whole defense watches film on their own and like we'll come coach Murph will put together a game plan but any one of these guys could put together the game plan you know um and it's just the kind of group we have so that allows those gaps from you know sunday to the next friday to be filled with like becoming very prepared for what we're getting into that's that's awesome um now during the during the season and even outside of season you stay pretty busy with lacrosse um you got you're putting out amazing content with first class lacrosse defense how do you get connected with deemer with that um so we actually went to high school together and I no know way you know, okay I, yeah yeah so um we're the same year in high school and have honestly known each other since we were you know 10 or so yeah um but then after you know after college i started working in um consulting in the baltimore annapolis area and for three years and deemer actually went to wall street for a year um and then he he was like struggling to balance across and that and really you know decided he wanted wasn't ready to give up across so he started his training business and then about a year and a half ago um i was kind of hitting a similar crossroads and we were talking about and we were trying to do some stuff together anyways but i had a lot of time free up and so decided to join up with him and try to build out the defensive side of uh his first class training that's awesome how's that been going for you it's been good it's been fun um you know it's 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 like anything it's challenging um but it's been fun to a you know covid's been interesting in that regard too but it's been fun we've been able to travel around and and you know train different kids in different areas and run different group training sessions the online stuff's been a ton of fun but also very yeah. challenging it's yeah. it's um it's i love it because i i love watching i love lacrosse so i love yeah. <laughs> watching i watch games and i take clips and i try to break them down and make them like how can i make this digestible for people to understand um, i've actually been working on ones i've for like it's been killing me but i'm trying to get used to like the adobe premiere editing stuff which i'm not yeah, good at but yeah. <laughs> i'm trying to get i'm trying to get good at it which has been a fun skill um but yeah it's been good i really enjoy doing it um and it's just it's like it's, it's a startup it's a business so how can you make stuff that people find valuable and how do you you know how do you give people something they want or need um so we're trying to figure out the best way to do that but it's been fun doing it it's been fun doing it with Deemer and the other guys he's got on board you know they're smart they, i think yeah. they look at the game across the right way they care so much about the game and the and the and the players that are involved that it's just like it's refreshing doing it through that lens and it's, it's fun yeah. to do that awesome um all right well let's uh Let's wrap this up with one thing non uh, non lacrosse related that you want the fans to know about. Non lacrosse related. Yeah. Like, what's one thing yeah. about you non lacrosse related at all that you'd like the other uh, Whips fans to know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a uh, um, that's a good question. I, I, a lot of what I do is lacrosse related, <laughs> but I will say um, in college I picked up. I picked up uh, the guitar, and so okay. I, you know, I've been playing that for a couple of years. Not very, not insanely well, but that's kind of my, you know, for my whole life it was like school and sports, and I never really had another like hobbies and social yeah. life, I guess. Uh, and so <laughs> I've done that, and that's been a fun, like, different change of pace hobby for me. Aside from like business focus, lacrosse focus, and then that's my my kind of thing that I've I've loved doing that. So. For me like finding things like that to broaden my um you know hobbies and and mindset have been great okay so if you bring the guitar to training camp um who's your lead singer okay <laughs> on the whips i don't yeah that's it i i he's got to have a good voice i'm trying to yeah. think of who you know i think i'm gonna go with um 
thinking through position right now. Yeah. I might go, I, I probably would have gone Brett Schmidt last year, but he retired. I feel like he, I feel like he would have been, a, <laughs> I feel like Brett, you know, from the energy he would bring. And yeah. I, I think he has the vocals to back it up. I would, I would go Brett Schmidt. So we'll bring we Schmidt back. back, bring Schmidt yeah. back, have we him bring, sing some numbers bring, for you. Yeah. Bring him back. And I think he's, he's my guy. Okay. Perfect. Well, Matt, thank you so much um, for coming on. Um, where can people find you on socials? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for having me yeah. um, on Instagram at Matt underscore done 33. And also at FCL defense is kind of our page where I'll be pumping out most of our lacrosse related content, uh, Twitter at FCL defense and at I'm done tweeting for my personal account. So those are, uh, those are my main social pages right now. Boom. There you have it. Best Twitter handle on the whips. You heard it here first. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> thanks again, Matt. I really appreciate your time. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thanks. If you made it here to the end of the video, go ahead and comment down below your favorite part of the interview and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please go hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more Whipsnakes content.